Was anybody else genuinely nervous watching the college football playoff rankings show yesterday? I found myself with maybe nervous isn't the right word, but a sort of energy and excitement, if you will, because you knew that something unprecedented was going to happen. Something that had never happened before was going to happen, no matter what took place. Either we were going to have no SEC team, we were going to, for the first time, leave out an undefeated Power 5 champion. There was a lot on the line yesterday. And at the end of the day, these are your top four. Now, two of them, there was no drama. Number one and number two, Michigan and Washington. Michigan undefeated, handled their business against Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. Washington, a team that a lot of folks doubted, including yours truly. I picked Oregon to win the Pac-12 title. Thought Oregon would get their revenge. Washington said, no, sir. Finish it all. 13-0, they win the final Pac-12 championship, at least Pac-12 championship looking like what we know it to be. Either way, so Michigan won, Washington two. Beyond that, there was speculation. There was questioning. There was who's going to be three, who's going to be four. I think a lot of us felt confident that Texas would be in at number three, and they were finishing 12-1 and one and winning the Big 12 championship. And at number four, the question was, is it going to be Alabama? SEC champions, or is it going to be Florida State? Undefeated ACC champs, but, but without their starting quarterback, Jordan Travis. As the logo was revealed, as the logo was unveiled, it was the Alabama A that was presented. Florida State at five, Georgia at six, and the college football world reacted in a frenzy. Let me start by saying this. I do genuinely feel for Florida State, for Mike Norvell, for Jordan Travis, for that entire program. I feel for the fans of Florida State. Because when you look at things, you say, what else could they have done? They were an undefeated Power 5 champion. They won all of their games. They beat LSU to kick off the season in the non-conference. Even after Jordan Travis went down, they went into Gainesville, hostile environment, beat the Gators at their place on rivalry weekend, then went in the ACC championship. They beat the Louisville Cardinal, a team that, yes, had lost to Kentucky the week prior, but was 10-2 and and was one of the best teams in the ACC, hence why they were in that game all season long. Florida State did everything they could do. So did Florida State get screwed? Absolutely they did. But did the committee get it right, putting Alabama in at number four? Absolutely they did. Guys, you know what the beauty of the committee is and the committee gets it wrong a lot right we 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 question the committee is it most deserving is it the best like how do they determine these things is it just a made for tv product is it what are they basing this off of right the committee's far from perfect but the beautiful thing about having a committee is this guys in the old system the bcs We allowed computers to determine who was in the national championship. And that system was far from perfect. Look at 2004 Auburn as a great example. An undefeated Auburn Tigers team that went 13-0. So when you look at this year, the beauty of having a committee, guys, is this. And I don't know why more folks aren't bringing this point up. The beauty of a committee 
And having human beings on a committee is the ability to use logic and critical thinking when it comes to determining, okay, who are the best four teams in college football? Who are the best four teams? That's the job of the committee. Give us the four best teams. Most deserving guys. Those are the teams that went undefeated. We have group of five teams that go undefeated every other year. Are they deserving of being in? Nobody would argue that. We would talk about eye test. We'd talk about resume. We'd, we'd say, well, I mean, anybody, anybody with a brain would look and see that team can't compete with the four who are in there. The committee used logic and critical thinking and used their brains to determine, you know what, as unfortunate as it is, as much as it sucks, as much as Florida State is getting screwed over, one of these does not belong. When you looked at the five, you looked at the six teams. Guys, I'd put Georgia back in before I'd put Florida State in. If you're talking about the four best teams, I'd still argue Georgia is one of the four best. No question. But when it comes down to Alabama or Florida State, there is nobody out there with any football sense that thinks Florida State without Jordan Travis would beat Alabama or beat Texas or beat Washington or beat Michigan. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And we hear the argument about, well, what about 2014 Ohio State with Cardell Jones? Guys, do you really think Tate Rodemaker's Cardell Jones? Is that what you're telling me right now? Come on. Come on. And I'll also add this. I am someone, I'm in favor of the 12-team college football playoff. And I've heard all the pushback about how it demeans the regular season. The, the regular season will mean nothing. What about games with no safety nets? But the regular season, it means nothing. Guys, we just got shown in a four-team playoff, the regular season meant nothing. Isn't that ironic? In a 12-team playoff, guess what? Florida State would have the opportunity to go prove it on the field. You want to talk about the regular season meaning nothing. What about a system that is a four-team playoff when there are five power conferences? How does that make any sense? The regular season will mean nothing to who? Ask Florida State how much the regular season means today. Ask them how they would feel about a 12-team playoff. So this just debunks everyone's Argument about, well, it just, you know, it kills the regular season. Baloney. Bullshit is what I say to that. But at the end of the day, as tough as the decision was, the committee got it right, guys. The committee got it right. It's about putting the four best teams in. The one-loss SEC champion is one of the four best. And you could not put Bama in without putting Texas in who beat Alabama on their home field by double digits. And I love the people that try to write that off as, well, that game was months ago. And all these teams change, by the way. So I heard that argument too. Well, I mean, Florida State's changed the team. Nobody's looking. How has Texas changed? How has Bama changed? I understand those teams have changed. Teams evolve. But teams typically get better as the season goes. So Texas, if anything, they should be a better version of what they were in that game. Bama certainly is a better version of what they were early on. And so, again, the beauty of the committee is this, guys. We don't have computers blindly putting teams in. We don't have that. And it sucks. But here's something I think is rich. Here's something I think is just really rich. There are folks out there, I'm not going to name them, there are folks out there who have spent years, I mean years, belittling the ACC, how terrible the ACC is. 
the the all cupcakes conference. They don't play nobody. They're terrible. And now they have a problem that Florida State's getting left out without their best player. Now we're touting the ACC. Now you're wanting to defend the mighty ACC. Come on, man. So which is it? Is Florida State as good as they are because they play in the All Cupcakes Conference? And now you're going to tell me that team without their starting quarterback is one of the best four? Come on. Come on. The irony in that is incredible, truly. So, the bottom line is this. It's about the four best. Michigan and Washington, no-brainer. They were in. Texas, I think they deserve to be in as well. Beat Alabama by double digits, one of the best non-conference wins. Next year to be a conference game, but one of the best non-conference wins of the season. And then Alabama beating the back-to-back national champions, what they did in that SEC title game. And again, using logic, using your brain, there's nobody that would take Florida State to beat Alabama. Nobody. So, did Bama get screwed? Excuse me, did Florida State get screwed? Yes. Did the committee get it right? Yes. Both things can be true. Both things are true. And now our college football playoff final four is set. And I can't wait to watch it unfold.